Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now I just finished up all my testings on the latest machine available from Minix which is the NGC1 right over here powering these two displays at this moment. Uh, but before we begin the video we'd just like to mention a few things here one of which is uh, Minix has a huge lineup uh, in terms of mini computers but most of them are Android uh, mini computers or Android media players as you want to call them. Uh, it has about 10 or 12 uh, devices that we can choose for, for, from so a huge selection there uh, but they released last year the first uh, Windows machine from Minix which was the Z64 and I still believe today one year later uh, that this is a great and affordable solution uh, for a office for a kids bedroom for a classroom um, where we need productivity uh, like office work uh, emails browsing at a very uh, low cost on my opinion this on the other hand the NGC1 is a different machine it's a completely different machine if I can say so and I consider it a premium mini computer not only in terms of the internals but especially in the build quality in the construction of this device and actually I only have here on the office one device that I can compare in terms of build quality to this uh, mini computer right over here now that being said this brings pros and cons to any machine and I will do a video just uh, next after I record this one and publish it uh, um, where I will share with you guys my opinion in terms of the concerns about pricing and also the concerns about where the device this device sorry stands on the market and hopefully this video right over here which will be the performance review and what we can do with this device and I will publish another video right over here I will leave a link uh, right over here once it's ready so that this video along with the other one will help hopefully on my uh, at least that's what I hope for uh, that will help you to decide if this machine is the right machine for you or not as always here on the channel now guys that being said this is a long intro let's go straight for the video hope that you guys enjoy it and I'll see you in a few seconds And here we are with the Minix NGC1 that features the Intel Quad Core Stellaron N3150 CPU with Intel HD graphics, 4GB of DDR3 RAM, and 128GB of SSD storage with Windows 10 64 bit Home Edition. And moving along to our usual and quick unboxing experience, once we open the package, we will find the NGC1 on the top. And honestly, this thing looks gorgeous. The enclosure is all made of a metallic material that feels and looks like brushed aluminium really sturdy and quite heavy as you may imagine we will also find two external antennas with an SMA connection one power adapter HDMI cable and the usual documentation now in terms of size the NGC1 is very similar to the Minix U1 being the NGC1 just a little bit taller but in terms of build quality there is no other box or mini Windows computer that I've tried so far that has this high level of quality. Now I do find the plastic on Minix machines of high quality but here we are talking about a solid metallic enclosure so the only thing similar in terms of build quality is my Mac Mini which by the way this is a late 2012 model i7 at 2.3 gigahertz quad core CPU but as I was saying the material is identical a darker color but the touch is very similar and when I touch on both it's really hard to tell any difference between the material used to build these two beautiful machines so just awesome here but moving along at the front we will find that the usual blue LED when the machine is on on the left hand side two antennas and a Cassington lock on the right hand side one power button and three USB 3.0 ports at the back a headphone jack mini display port HDMI 1.4 optical out gigabit Ethernet and a power input jack at the top that Minix logo and finally at the bottom four rubber feet and usually I don't open boxes that I review but this is not just a box and I was really curious to see the inside of it so after removing the rubber feet and the four screws underneath it I could have a look at the components and as as we can see if in the future we need to upgrade the RAM or the SSD we can which will be great to give this machine a few more years down the road. 
Now to connect the NGC one, I use the HDMI to connect the first display and the mini display port to connect to the second one. And when we turn it on for the first time, we will see the Windows setup guide and in a few minutes, we are ready to use it. In terms of the operating system, it has the Windows 10 Home Edition 64-bit version fully activated. And in terms of storage, roughly 100 gigs of free storage on the SSD. And moving to some benchmarks on the network speed test using a power line adapter on Wi-Fi we got 85 megabits per second on download and 20 megabits per second on upload while on the internet connection 100 megabits per second on download and 20 megabits per second on upload maxing out my connection. Which, by the way, the power line adapters that I'm using at this moment are the Devolo Power Line Adapter Kit with Gigabit Connection and Wi Fi AC. And for a full review, just check out the right top corner of this video. And moving along, on this speed test, we had a maximum value of roughly 350 megabytes on reads and 100, 110 on writes. On Geekbench 3, 869 on single core score and 2846 on multi core score. 3D Mark score, iStorm Extreme, 14850. And to test out the the USB 3.0 connection, I used a Samsung 850 EVO SSD on an inner tech enclosure and we got roughly 370 megabytes both on reads and on writes. And finally, I used a stress test to max out all cores of the CPU during almost one hour and a half and as you guys can see, no thermal throttle or any other issue with the CPU. And moving to the real world usage, I had a really nice experience on the office and multitasking experience. With the office apps such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, I felt no issues at all. And the same happened with the browsing experience and email reading, which this machine is obviously more than capable. And in terms of gaming, this machine has the Intel HD graphics, so it will be capable of playing any game available on the Windows Store, such as Cloud Raiders or Asphalt 8 Airborne. On the other hand, for desktop games, we cannot expect much from it. It will play classic games or non-graphic intensive games, but that will be it. And I tested out with Toy Box and Worms Crazy Golf, which played fine, but I would say that this is the type of game that it's the limit on this machine. And as we could imagine, it's totally capable of game streaming as we were expecting. And I tested out with a few races on Grid Auto Sport, and the experience, as you guys can see on screen, was just just flawless. And although I personally prefer Android machines for multimedia consumption, I know that a large portion of the community uses Windows mini computers not only for productivity but also for entertainment. So I did install the latest version of Kodi 15.2 at the moment of the recording and on my test it played perfectly, Big Bug Bunny and Tears of Steel up to 4K with H.264 codec. And the only file that I was not able to play was Sintel with the H.265 codec both the 1080 and 4K versions that kept giving me a green screen with some artifacts. But using Plex, I was able to play besides Big Bug Bunny and Tears of Steel, also the Sintel 1080 version perfectly. And the 4K version was not smooth as you guys can see on screen. So my conclusion here is that this is an issue either with codecs or drivers. So there might be something that I need to install to make it perfect. And as I mentioned before, I don't use Windows for multi media consumption so I can be missing something right over here. And although I don't see this machine as a media consumption device for me, I can definitely see it as a media server, especially using Plex. And I did test it out with four different mobile devices and starting from the left, the G Smart Classic and Zopo Speed 7 Plus with Android Lollipop and iPhone 6 and the iPad Mini with Retina Display running iOS 9 and playing Big Buck Bunny, Tears of Steel and Sintel simultaneously with no efforts at all and only pushing the CPU to about 70-80% when using the Plex player on the computer as well. But the results overall are just awesome. So I can definitely see this machine on an office used for productivity while serving media on the background to all other devices that we have on our home. 
So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most were the excellent build quality that Minix delivered on this machine and I cannot stress enough that the quality is completely different from everything that we have seen so far here on the channel in terms of boxes or mini computers. Also being able to drive two displays and of course it's capable of running a 4K display at 30Hz but I have no way of testing that out. Fast Ethernet and Wi-Fi speeds, a fast SSD inside and finally being able to be upgraded in a few years if necessary. On the other hand, things that I did like the least, honestly, there was nothing not to like, of course, on my opinion, and I had a few issues playing H.265 files on Kodi, but this is related to software, so not a complaint at all at the machine itself. And that is it, we have reached the end of another review, this time the Minix NGC1 Windows 10 mini computer. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.